the rectangular coordinate system and graphs. The Cartesian coordinate system is a way of just locating points in a plane. And what we do is we have an axis that's an x-axis that we see here that represents the real number line. And we have an axis that's the y-axis that also represents the real number line. But the x-axis gives us our horizontal locations and our y-axis gives us our vertical locations. And right here where the two meet, this is called the origin. Now to plot any point, each point is determined by its x and y coordinate. This tells us our location. So if we're going to go ahead and take a look at where 2, 4 is located, we always start at the origin and we think to ourselves for each of these points, we've seen the x coordinate written first and the y coordinate written second. That's alphabetical order, easy enough to remember. So that means the horizontal distance is referred to first and the vertical distance is referred to second. So from the origin, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go two units to the right, four units up, and we'll plot our point right here. Now I'm going to erase these lines right there. To plot the second point, well, all we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to look at the x-coordinate first. What's the x-coordinate here? Negative 2. Negative 2, very good. So if I go ahead and take a look at going left two units, I then check to see what direction I'll go vertically. And what would that be? That would be 1. Up, up 1, very good. And I'd plot the point. And again, now I'll go ahead and erase those two marks. Well, now that we have the pattern, let's see if we can speed it up a little bit. Here, go ahead, x is what? x is negative, negative 3. Negative 3. y is? <clears throat> negative 2. Negative 2. So I'm going left 3 units, down 2, and I have my point. And then for 3, negative 1, we're going which way? We're going? To the right. 3 units, three and then units. which way? And then down one unit. And then down one unit. Very, very good. And we have our points. Now we have two more points, and these points lie along the actual axes themselves. 4, 0 says we're going to go ahead and go right four units, and neither up nor down. The point would be right here. 0, negative 3, we're not going left nor right, but we're going down three units. And so this point, 4, 0, is referenced as an x-intercept if it's part of a graph of an equation or function. This is referenced as the y-intercept. So that's what we want to do. We want to be able to graph an equation. To graph an equation, we're just going to plot points. So to plot points, I'm going to go ahead and choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 input values, 5 values of x. And we're going to generate the y-coordinates. And then we'll plot these ordered pairs. So to generate the y-coordinates, we know y is equal to 2x minus 1. So we'd substitute in the value of x. We have 2 times negative 2 minus 1. That corresponding y-coordinate would be what? It would be negative 5. So the ordered pair would be negative 2, negative 5. Very good. Let's look at the second input value. We're going to have x is negative 1. To generate the y-coordinate, 2 times negative 1 minus 1. What does that give us back? It gives us back negative 3. Good. So the x value is negative 1, and the corresponding y value is negative 3. Well, when x is 0, y is equal to? Negative 1. Good. When x is what? When x is 1, y is equal to? y is equal to 1. And lastly, when x is what? When x is? When x is 2. y is equal to? To 3. Those are the points we're going to plot. So let's go ahead and plot them. We're going to go ahead and say we have negative 2, negative 5. So that's which way? That's left? Left and 2. Down. And down how many? 5. All right, there's one point. What's the second point we're going to plot? Which way is it? 
It's the left. How many? One. Down or up? And down three. Okay. Second point. Third point we're going to plot. How far left or right is it? It's um, down one. Okay, so you didn't answer it's, the question how far left or right it is. It's, it's neither. Neither. I like, I, like, I like that. How about the point one, one? Left, right, then up, down. What, what do I got here? Right one. Yeah. And up one. All right. Lastly, two, three. Up, down, left, right. What, what's going on? Right two, up three. Very good. And so now we can use these particular five points to graph our line. Thank you. Graph the equation shown by plotting points. And the equation is y equals negative x plus 2. Now the easiest way for me to do this is to simply set up a table. Well, I'll choose values of x and then substitute them into the equation y equals negative x plus 2 to generate the y coordinate. And then from there, see if I can write down the ordered pairs that I'll actually plot. So I'm going to choose values of x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and find the corresponding y coordinates. So it looks like y is equal to negative x plus 2, so that would be negative a negative 2 plus 2, that's 2 plus 2 which is 4. So the coordinate pair that I'll plot is negative 2, 4. So I'll go left negative 2 units up 4 and place a point. Then x is equal to negative 1. So I have y is equal to negative a negative 1 and plus 2. Negative a negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So I'll plot the coordinate pair negative 1, 3. I'll go left negative 1, up 3. I'll put a point. Then x is 0. So I have negative 0 plus 2 and that's 2. So what's my coordinate pair? 0, 2. So I'll neither go left nor right, but I'll go up 2 units. Then x is equal to 1. So I have negative 1 plus 2, which is equal to 1. And now I'll plot what coordinate pair? 1, 1. I'll go right 1, up 1. And lastly, x is equal to 2. So I have negative 2 plus 2, and that's 0. So I'll plot the coordinate pair, 2 comma 0. So I'll go right 2, neither up nor down. So now I'll plot the graph by drawing a straight line through the points and place arrows, and I have my graph that I created by plotting points. Thank you. Find the intercepts of the equation Sketch the graph using only the intercepts. y equals negative 3x minus 4. So I'm going to start with the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, they will occur whenever y equals 0. So I'll set y equal to 0. I'll have 0 is equal to negative 3x minus 4. And I'll solve for x. I'll add a 4 to both sides of the equation. This gives me 4 is equal to negative 3x. Then I'll divide both sides of the equation by what? By negative 3. And I have x is equal to negative 4 thirds. So I'll plot the point negative 4 thirds 0. So I'll place negative 4 thirds, that's a little bit smaller than negative 1, and I'll write negative 4 thirds 0 as the coordinate pair. Now the other intercept is the y-intercept. How do I find the y-intercept? To find the y-intercept I let x equal 0. So we have y is equal to negative 3 times 0 minus 4. Well negative 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So let's write my coordinate pair, x is 0, y is negative 4, 0, negative 4. We'll go ahead and place a point at 0, negative 4, and then use these two points as a guide to sketch the line by simply drawing a line through the points 
and placing arrows on either side. Thank you. Find the distance between the two points, negative 3, negative 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to draw a line segment between negative 3, negative 1, and then 2, 3. I'm going to go left 3, down 1, place a point. Right 2, up 3, place another point, and then draw a line segment. When I draw a line segment, what I'll see here is that this line segment has a certain distance, which I'll label D. Now the formula for distance, that's going to be the square root of, and I'll subtract the x-coordinates, x2 minus x1, and I'll square the result. And then I'll subtract the y-coordinates, y2 minus y1, square the result, and add each of these two perfect squares. Now, I'll let my first point, negative 3, negative 1, be the coordinate pair x1, y1, and the coordinate pair 2, 3, be x2, y2. So I'll substitute in for x1, x sub 1, negative 3. And for y sub 1, I'll substitute in a negative 1. For x sub 2, well, I'll substitute in a 2. And for y sub 2, I'll substitute in the 3. So what does this give me? My distance is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1. Well, that'd be 2 minus a negative 3 squared, then plus y2 minus y1 would be 3 minus a negative 1 squared. And now we look to simplify. My distance will be equal to the square root of, and 2 minus a negative 3 is 2 plus 3. That's 5. So this is the square root of 5 squared plus. Now 3 minus a negative 1 is 3 plus 1. That's 4, so plus 4 squared. So now I have my distance is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared. 5 squared is 25, and 4 squared is 16. My distance of that line segment is the square root of 25 plus 16, or the square root of 41. Thank you. Find the midpoint of the line segment with the endpoint shown. 7, negative 2 is the first coordinate pair. 9, 5 is the second coordinate pair. Now to find the midpoint, what you do is you average the x-coordinates. So that's x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, followed by, and then you average the y-coordinates. y1 plus y2 over 2. And this is equal to. Well, let's pause and identify that 7, negative 2, is what we'll call x1, y1. And 9, 5, we'll call that x2, y2. So substituting in, we have x1 plus x2. That would be 7 plus 9. We'll divide by 2. Remember, we're just averaging the x-coordinates, then averaging the y-coordinates. So for the y-coordinates, we have negative 2 plus 5 divided by 2. Simplifying, 7 plus 9 is 16. So we have 16 over 2, negative 2 plus 5 is 3, followed by 3 over 2. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. So it looks like my midpoint is 8, 3 divided by 2. Thank you. Linear equations. A linear equation in one variable has this particular form right here. ax plus b equals 0. And a and b could be any real numbers, but the key is a can't be 0. And what we're going to do is solve a linear equation, something that looks just like this right here. And what this means is we want to find the value of x that we would put in to make this equation true. So that is tantamount to really just solving for x. x is equal to some number. And we're just going to simply add, subtract, multiply, or divide to both sides of the equation to what's called isolate x. We may end up even using the distributive property. And the one thing we can never do, we want to be mindful, we can't divide by 0. And one thing we can do is see if we're right. We can check our answer. 
So if we want to solve this linear equation, what I want to do is isolate x. So I'm kind of thinking about the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But I'm thinking of them in reverse. I'm kind of undoing the calculation to get x by itself. So that means that what I'm going to do is think, if I was following you all the operations, I would multiply then add. I'm now thinking in reverse. I'm going to get rid of that 11 that I'm adding. And so I'm going to subtract from both sides of the equation an 11. So I have 5x plus 11 minus 11 is equal to 21 minus 11. And that gives us what on the left side? 5x. And on the right side? Just 10. Just 10. And now to remove the 10, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by? By the 5. By the 5. Very good. And I end up with x is equal to what? x is equal to? 2. 2. And very quickly, we hook on to what we're doing. If we want to be able to move the 11, if it's a plus 11, we'll subtract an 11 from both sides. If there was a negative 11 there, we would add an 11 to both sides. We hook on to the fact that when we wanted to remove the 5, what did we do? We realized the 5 was being multiplied to the x, so we did again the opposite. We divided both sides by 5. If 5 was being divided, we had x divide, excuse me, if x was being divided by 5, again, we'd do the opposite. We'd multiply both sides of the equation by that 5. And we can check. We can check this to see if we're right, right? We can go ahead and say, gosh, I know for a fact that if I put a 2 into the calculation, I can see if I end up getting 21. I'll know if I'm right. Well, 5 times 2 is? 10. 10, 10 plus 11 is? 21. Okay, so we do have the check, don't we? Let's do it again. And when we do it again, what we realize is that we have another linear equation, except it's not quite in this, that typical form, because we just have so many more terms. And x seems to be trapped inside parentheses. So all we're going to do is use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. Now, follow this. I'm going to put x's on one side, numbers on the other, and then finally see if we can divide. A lot of words there, but let, let's go through this. First thing I'm going to do is grab a color. There we go. I'm going to write down my problem, and I have 4 times what? 4 times x? Plus 5. Good. Plus? Plus 3 equals 6 times 2 minus x. Good. Plus 16. Very good. Now I want to remove the parentheses, so I'm going to use the distributive property. You're going to use the distributive property. You're going to go ahead and multiply the 4 by x and by 5. You're going to multiply the 6 by 2 and by negative x. So let's rewrite the next line. What do we end up getting? 4 times x is? 4x. 4 times 5 is? 20. Good. And then we have what left over? Plus what? Plus? Plus 3. Now let's distribute the x to both terms. In other words, 6 times 2 is? 12. 6 times negative x? Uh, negative 6x. Good. And then plus what? Plus what? Plus, plus 16. Plus 16. Now at this point, we're going to collect like terms. Uh, we're going to add and subtract the numbers. If we were able to, we would add and subtract those terms with, the co with, 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 with x. If we were collecting like terms, let's see if we can figure out what terms we're collecting. We're going to collect the 20 and the 3 and the 12 and the 16, right? Right. So what do we end up having on the left side? We have 4x what? 4x? 4x plus 23. Good. And that's equal to what? That's equal to? Be equal to... 28 minus 6x. Let me write that down. That's very good. Now, I have x on both sides of the equation. I got numbers on both sides of the equation. Right. I don't want any of that. I want x's on one side, numbers on the other. I want you to visualize the following. This negative 6x I'm going to bring here. This 23 I'm going to bring there. So to do that, all I'm going to do is first start with the 6x to move the negative 6x to the left side, you're not really moving to the left side. What are you doing to both sides of the equation? You're going to add a 6x. All right, so I have 4x plus 6x plus 23 is equal to 28 minus 6x plus 6x. And what does that simplify to be? What does the left side look like? 
10x plus 23. So you combined like terms, 4x and 6x was 10x. And on the right side, what did you have? You would just have 28. Because negative 6x plus 6x is 0. Now, next thing I want to do is move that 23 to the right, except I'm not really moving it to the right. I'm going to do the opposite of adding the 23. I will... You will subtract 23. Very good. So if I subtract 23 from both sides of the equation, then I have 28 minus 23 on the right side. That's equal to what? That's equal to? That's equal to 5. Beautiful. Almost done. The last thing I want to do is say I don't want 10x is equal to something. I want x is equal to something. Right. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by 10. I'm going to do what? I'm going to? You're going to divide by 10. Divide both sides by 10. So now I have my answer. My answer is x is equal to what? x is equal to? x is equal to 1 half. Beautiful job. And you can check it. And the way you would check it is you would take out either your pen and pencil or your calculator. You'd put a half here. You'd put a half here. And you'd see if you get a true equation. Thank you. Solve the following equation. And we have 2x plus 7 equals 19. So the first thing I want to do is isolate the term with an x. So I'll go ahead and subtract a 7 from both sides of the equation. Well, 7 minus 7 is 0. This leaves 2x on the left side. 19 minus 7 is 12, a 12 on the right side. Then I want to divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient in front of the x. I'll divide both sides of the equation by 2. 2's cancel, and so x is equal to 12 over 2. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. Thank you. Solve the following rational equation. 2 divided by x minus 3 divided by 2 is equal to 7 divided by 2x. Now what I want to do is see if I can clear the denominators. To do this, I'll multiply by the least common denominator. Now the denominators are a c or an x, a 2, and a 2x. So my least common denominator would be 2 times x. So I'm going to write my equation. 2 divided by x minus 3 over 2 is equal to 7 divided by 2x. And I'll multiply both the left side of the equality by 2x and the right side of the equality by 2x. So on the left side of the equality, I have 2x multiplied by 2 over x. And then I'm going to subtract, and I'll have 2x times 3 over 2. And this is equal to, on the right side of the equality, 7 divided by 2x multiplied by 2x. Now when we multiply, we can cancel common factors. So let's go on the left side of the equality and see what's common in the numerator and denominator. Well, it's the x's, so they will cancel. x divided by x is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. They're common. What else is common? Well, 2x divided by 2x is 1. And now we'll write our equality again with what's left over. We have 2 times 2 minus x times 3, or 3x. And this is equal to 7. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. So now I have 4 minus 3x is equal to 7. I want to isolate the x term. So the first thing I'll do is subtract a 4 from both sides of the equation. I have 4 minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 7 minus 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, so I'm left with negative 3x is equal to 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. To isolate the x, since I'm multiplying by a negative 3, I'll divide both sides of the equation by negative 3. And I'm left with these negative 3's canceling. So on the left side I have x is equal to 3 divided by negative 3, which is negative 1. The last thing I want to do is go back and check in my original expression and make sure a negative 1 would not make any denominator 0. And it wouldn't. I would have 2 divided by negative 1. I would have 7 divided by negative 2. So it looks like x equals negative 1 is the answer. Thank you. Find the equation of the line with the given point shown 3, 4 and 0, negative 3. 
then write the equation in slope-intercept form. Now for the equation of the line, we'll use the point-slope form. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Let's first identify x1 and y1. I like the zero for the x-coordinate, so x1 and y1 will be zero, negative three. So for y1, I'll substitute in a negative three, and for x1, I'll substitute in what? I'll substitute in a zero. Now I need to find the slope. But the slope is my change of y's divided by my change of x's. Now I've identified x1 and y1 as 0, negative 3. That leaves x2, y2 as 3, 4. So the slope calculation would look like y2 minus y1, or 4 minus a negative 3, divided by x2 minus x1, or 3 minus 0. 4 minus a negative 3 is 4 plus 3, that's 7. I have 7 thirds as my slope. Let's see if we can substitute in our point slope form of a line. We have y minus the y1, negative 3, and that's equal to 7 thirds times x minus 0. Now the next thing I want to do is write the equation in slope-intercept form. So I want to write it in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. That means we want to solve for y. So let's do that. y minus a negative 3 is y plus 3. x minus 0 is x, so that's equal to 7 thirds times x. Well, notice we're almost there. All we're going to do is subtract the 3 from both sides of the equation to solve for y. So we have y plus 3 minus 3 is equal to 7 thirds x minus 3. And what do you notice? 3 minus 3 is 0, and we're left with our slope-intercept form, which is y is equal to 7 thirds x minus 3. Thank you. Find the equation of the line with the given slope passing through the given point shown, and the slope is negative 6, and the point shown is 1 fourth comma negative 2. Then write the equation in standard form. So we're going to use the point-slope form of a line which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So first let's identify m. m is negative 6, so we'll place a negative 6 for m. And x1, y1, well that's 1 quarter negative 2. So y1 is negative 2 and x1 is 1 quarter. Substituting in, we have y minus a negative 2 is equal to negative 6 times x minus 1 quarter. Next, we want to write the equation in standard form, which is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0, which means we want to write this equation of a line set equal to 0. So let's do that. First, we'll simplify a little bit y minus a negative 2 is y plus 2. Then I'll distribute the negative 6. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. And negative 6 times negative a quarter, negative 6 times negative a quarter, two negatives multiplied is a positive. It's positive 6 over 4, which is equal to 3 over 2. So we have negative 6x plus 3 over 2. Almost done. What we want to do is set this to 0. So I'll add a 6x to both sides of the equation. So I have y plus 6x plus 2. And I'll subtract a 3 halves to both sides of the equation, minus 3 halves. And that's equal to negative 6x plus 6x plus 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2. And notice my right side is 0. And for my left side, well, we have 6x, again, writing in terms of ax first, plus y, by next, plus the constant. And the constant is found by taking 2 minus 3 over 2. 
I'm getting a common denominator. That's 4 over 2 minus 3 over 2. With a common denominator, we can just subtract the numerators. That's 1 half. So we have plus 1 half. So my equation in standard form is 6x plus y plus 1 half equals 0. Graph the equations of the given lines and state whether they are parallel. Easiest way to do that is to see if the slopes are equal. Perpendicular, easiest way to do that is to see if the slopes are negative reciprocals of one another or neither. So because we're so focused on slopes, I'm going to see if I can rewrite these equations in the form of y is equal to mx plus b so that I can examine these slopes. So let's start with 3y is equal to negative 4x plus 3. To solve for y, I'll divide both sides of the equation by what? By 3. And we get y is equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 1. So to plot this point, this 1 is my b. That's my y-intercept. I'll place a point there. Then I'll go ahead and say, gosh, my, my slope is negative 4 thirds. So that means I'm going to go down 4 and right 3 from that point. Down 4, right 3 places me right here. But I could also write my slope as 4 divided by negative 3, which means I'll go up 4 and left 3 from my initial point. Up 4, left 3, places a third point on the line here, and I'll just go ahead and draw in my line. Now I have a second line, don't I? I took care of my first line right here. Let's see if I can grab my second line. My second line is 3x minus 4y is 8. So I'll write 3x minus 4y is equal to 8. Again, I'll solve for y. So I'll subtract the 3x from both sides of the equation. This gives me negative 4y is negative 3x plus 8. Then I'll divide both sides of the equation by what? By negative 4. All three terms get divided by negative 4. So this leaves me with y is equal to, and negative 3 divided by negative 4 is 3 over 4. 3 divided by 4. 3 fourths x. 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2, minus 2. Again, I'll start with my y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 2. I'll use that as my starting point. Then I'll think about the slopes for a little bit. My slope is 3 over 4, which means from that point I'll go up 3, right 4. Up 3, right 4 and I'll place a point here. But I can also write this slope as negative 3 divided by negative 4, which means from that initial point I'll go down 3. And I'll also go left 4. Down 3, left 4, places a point right here. And I'll connect the points. Now I'm going to put arrows on the end of these lines. As you see here and here, they sure don't look parallel, but are they perpendicular? Well, to determine that, what will I do? I'll come back and examine the slopes. One slope, and I'm going to now call one slope m1, is negative 4 divided by 3. The other slope, which I'll call m2, is 3 over 4. So I've taken one slope taking its reciprocal and change the sign. And I do get the other slope. So these two lines truly are perpendicular. Thank you. Write the equation of a line parallel to 5x plus 3y equals 1 and passing through the point 3, 5. I'm going to use y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, the point slope form of a line. So what I have to do is I have to identify what x1 and y1 is. Well, I know x1, y1 
is the point the line goes through. That's 3, 5. So I'll go ahead and substitute in for y1 a 5. And for x1, I'll substitute in a 3. Next, I have to find the slope. And I know the slope is going to be the slope of the line 5x plus 3y equals 1. And that's because parallel lines have the same slope. So to find the slope of this line, I'll solve for y. I'll subtract the 5x from both sides of the equation. This gives me 3y is equal to negative 5x plus 1. Then to isolate y, I'll do the inverse operation of multiplying by 3. I'll divide every term by 3. So I find y is equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 1 third. And the slope of this line, which I'll call capital M, is negative 5 thirds. Now I know my line is parallel to it, so my line, which has a slope of little m, is equal to the slope of this line, big M. So my slope will be negative 5 thirds. Well, that's great. I now can begin the problem. I have y minus 5 is equal to negative 5 thirds times x minus 3. Now let me write the equation in the form of y equals mx plus b. So I'll solve for y. First thing I'll do is distribute the negative 5 thirds. So I have y minus 5 is equal to negative 5 thirds times x minus 5 thirds times a negative 3. So this gives me y minus 5 is equal to negative 5 thirds x. My 3's cancel and I end up with plus 5. Almost done. If I add a 5 to both sides of the equation, I have y is equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 5 plus 5 or plus 10. Here's the equation of my line parallel to 5x plus 3y equals 1 passing through 3, 5. It's y is equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 10. Thank you. Find the equation of a line perpendicular to the given line 5x minus 3y plus 4 equals 0 and passing through the given point negative 4, 1. So the line we're looking for we want to write it in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. And this slope right here, well, m is going to be equal to the negative reciprocal of the slope of the line we're given. So let's take the line we're given, which is 5x minus 3y plus 4, set it equal to 0, and solve for y to read off the slope. And when we do, we'll have little m. So to isolate the y term, I'm going to add a 3y to both sides of the equation. This gives me 5x plus 4 is equal to 3y. Then to solve for y, I'll divide every term by 3. Here the 3's cancel, and I end up with 5 thirds x plus 4 thirds is equal to y. Now this right here is the slope of my line in orange. That's 5 thirds. So the slope of the line perpendicular is negative 1 divided by 5 thirds. And so that means the slope of this line, if I invert and multiply, is negative 3 fifths. Now notice, if you will, we go through the point negative 4, 1. So we have a point, x1, y1, written as negative 4, 1. So I'm going to use the point slope form of an equation, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 to find my line, and eventually I'll go back and solve for y. In place of y1, I'll put a 1. In place of x1, I'll put a negative 4, and I found my slope to be negative 3 over 5. So now I have y minus 1 is equal to negative 3 over 5 
times x minus a negative 4. x minus a negative 4 is x plus 4. So now I have y minus 1 is equal to negative 3 fifths times x plus 4. So to solve for y, I'll distribute the negative 3 fifths to both terms. I have y minus 1 is negative 3 fifths times x. And then I'll take negative 3 fifths and multiply it by 4, which is 4 over 1. And that's negative 12 fifths. So now I have negative 3 fifths x minus 12 fifths. Almost done. I just want to add a 1 to both sides of the equation. So y is equal to negative 3 fifths x. And if I add a 1 to both sides of the equation, the calculation looks like negative 12 fifths plus 1, which is 5 over 5. And if I go ahead and use that common denominator, I'll add negative 12 and 5 in the numerator and get negative 7 fifths. So now I have y is equal to negative 3 fifths x minus 7 fifths. Thank you.